Ever since I picked up a copy of Pokemon Blue all that many years ago, the monster teaming genre has always stuck with me since I wanted to see the creative designs that the developers came up with. This, combined with compelling RPG elements, got me hook, line, and sinker. Games like Dragon Warrior Monsters, and even the more modern Sierra Lim did scratch the same itch, so I thought that I would take a look at the top 10 best upcoming monster teaming indie games for 2018 and beyond, sorted in rough order of when you will be able to play them. Number 10, Night Town. So this first entry is still rather early in development, and it's supposed to be a 2D indie RPG, taking place in a world where you can tame spirits. What I like about this is the variety in creature design, an essential component of all monster taming games, since we have everything from alien bears and reptiles to classic D&D inspired creatures, to themed creatures like pumpkins and even appliance inspired ones. Additionally, the spirits even feature multiple and alternate evolution routes with a cartoony art style. Unfortunately for us, other than quite a number of sprites being shown off, there hasn't been much on the gameplay and overworld exploration, so we may have to wait a little for this. Number 9. Monster Sanctuary This is supposed to be a cross between Pokemon and Metroid, with platforming sections, the all-important Metroidvania map, equipment for your creatures, and Metroidvania-style upgrades such as the high jump boots that allows you to access new areas. However, when you run into enemies on screen, the perspective shifts into a 3-on-3 turn-based Pokemon-style battle with multiple abilities and skill trees for individual monsters. If you follow the channel, you will know that I love Metroidvanias, so combining this with the monster teaming aspect is ingenious. Still relatively early on, so I can't wait for the official release. Number 8. Monster Crown Monster Crown is a game which is very clearly inspired by the original Pokemon games, especially due to the sprites and the overworld exploration. The battle screens look great, and the unique hook is that breeding plays a key role here. Perhaps most impressive is that the parents actually affect the physical appearance of the offspring, unlike breeding systems in, say, Dragon Warrior Monsters, for example. And as a result, the variety here is even greater. There are also items which affect evolution beyond the simple fire stone for fire Pokemon, so this looks to be pretty neat. No release date as of yet, but I believe a Kickstarter campaign should be launching in April. Number 7, New Genix. It took me a while to figure out that the sound was coming out of his butt, you know, I don't know, and I, I... Edmund McMillan is one of the minds behind Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac, two Hall of Fame indie games if there were ever to be such an award. A little while back, he announced New Genix to great fanfare, but nothing was heard of it since, and it slowly faded away. However, in a New Year's blog post for 2018, Edmund says that New Genix lives and is currently being remade from the ground up. It was described as a cross between The Sims, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, and Tamagotchi, and is all about breeding cats. Still no release dates on this, but definitely very excited for it. Number 6, Unleashed. This game was successfully kickstarted about 10 days ago to the tune of about 10,000 euros. It sells itself as a darker 2D RPG exploring deeper themes. The creatures in this are known as Akivaras, manifestations of human sins and virtues, with 3-on-3 three -three battles as the mainstay. In a similar way to Shin Megami Tensai, the creatures here are suitably grotesque and not for kids, but the designs are pretty interesting. It also has an open world with details such as player housing, crafting, farming, etc. So it is quite ambitious. So best of luck to the developers and hopefully we will see more in the coming months. Number 5, Notemon. Notemon's unique hook is that it is being built in Pico 8 a fantasy console used for making small games. Pico 8 games have a unique look to them, which is represented in this game 
and thus far, the minimalist pixel art does seem to work, although I am interested in seeing how much variety there can be. Attacks generate some form of cooldown, rather than being restricted to some arbitrary PP number, HP heals up fully between battles, and all Notamon can learn an unlimited number of skills but can only select 4 to bring into battle, meaning that there's no need to forget moves. Interestingly, the developer is adding a beast building system where if you have the correct facilities, Notamon will then join you voluntarily rather than being beaten into submission as in Pokemon, so I want to see where this goes. There is a targeted release of sometime in 2018, but I'm not too sure on that since the scope of the project appears to be increasing. Number 4, Seralim 3 I did mention the original Seralim as a monster taming RPG which I really enjoyed, so check out my video on that for more details. The developer has gone from strength to strength, releasing Seralim 2 in 2016 and adding content to that game until 2017. And now its sequel, Seralim 3, is set for an early access release in May of this year. This uses procedurally generated maps, randomized objectives, and mechanics such as creature summoning, breeding, crafting, and more. Seralim 3 looks to add to that, incorporating things like perks for your character, knowledge about the creatures that you kill, revamped sigils and runes, and even hereditary breeding. The past two games have been pretty fantastic, so I am looking forward to the new systems here. Number 3, Korumon. In my opinion, Korumon is the best looking game out of all the titles on this list due to the bright colors used and the quality of the pixel art. There are puzzles and 120 plus monsters, as well as the usual battling, evolving, and collection of them. Of the titles on this list, Koromon looks to be the most true to the source material, and I'm always glad for a new entrant in the market. This game is slated for a Q2 2018 release, which should be soon, so keep your eyes peeled for it. Number 2, Ooblets. This game by Glumberland is inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing, where you can literally grow your companions. The vibe is whimsical, and the art very cute, reminding me a little bit of Adventure Time, with the standard turn-based battles. It simply looks so appealing for a monster taming game, and the added customization options for your character and player housing are just icing on the cake. Ooblets is slated for a 2018 release, so hopefully we will be able to play this soon. And finally, number 1, Re-Legend. An action RPG where you can tame monsters known as Magnus, Re-Legend also adds in farming, crafting, and skills such as mining, fishing, logging, and more. My first impression of this was Stardew Valley, but with a monster taming aspect, and based on the trailer, the Magnuses look pretty varied and interesting. The hamster with the horn in particular looks cute, and much like the farming games that came before this, Re-Legend looks to set the gaming world ablaze. As of the time of recording, the beta for Kickstarter backers is supposed to start soon with a planned 2018 release. This is possibly my most anticipated title this year, so keeping my fingers crossed that it will be great. Alright, so this is my list of the top 10 best upcoming monster taming indie games for 2018 and beyond. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, follow my Steam Curator, and check out the subreddit to keep up with the best indie games, and I will see you in the next video.